<laughs> we are live what's up everybody my name is paula rubio aka gn i'm here with the one and only dean franco how's it going brother good and you know again i want to thank you for doing this i know you're a busy guy and so i appreciate you taking the time and you know and the willingness to to do this for me thank you of course of course dean and by the way in case um things get a little heated <laughs> I want to remind everybody that it was Dean Franco. This was Dean's idea. This, is, this wasn't my idea. This is Dean's idea. Um, Dean, I'm going to do my, my intro again because this is a fresh broadcast. Sure. But yeah. basically what I said, um, what I said was that, you know, Khaleesi Illustrissimo, just like any Filipino martial arts system, is going to have its share of drama, mm -hmm. politics, disagreements, things like that. And there, I'm going to ask some questions that some people are going to be like, you should not ask that question, Paolo. That is a rude one. Um, and then I'm going to ask questions that people are going to be like, oh my God, I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah. And what I was saying was that I can't please everybody. So I'm just going to do me and you do you. Yeah, um, if I ask a question that you don't feel comfortable with answering, don't answer it. You know yeah, what I mean? You, because yeah, you brought yeah. a good point though. We have to be true to ourselves. I mean, like that's what makes you and that's what makes me. I mean, so, you know, the one thing I would like to just mention for everybody that's watching, so they don't draw erroneous conclusions or think this is that I urge people to watch all the five episodes. This is basically where I drew my conclusions. So if they have doubts or something, they should really watch all five. And as far as my intentions right from the get-go were, one, to bring more exposure to KI as a whole, and two, to hopefully get sanctions, teachers, groups, however you want to use for, you know, description, to work together. And we are seeing some semblance of that. Google Brandon just last weekend got together with the Kiro group and all that. So if this is where it starts and it takes off, then home run, you know? That's that's really awesome. Um, and, and again, we're not going to tiptoe around the fact that some people don't like each other, right? Some groups consider other groups to be rival. And you know, I want to say for the most part, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that FMA is still very much in its infancy as far as its global reach, right? Mm. And so there tends to be, when there is a shortage of students, I mean, the, the people are going to cannibalize one another, right? Or, or they're going to get that perception. And, the, and instead of really, and this goes with every Filipino martial arts system where there's division, um, they're going to want to propose their super superiority, right? One over the other. So first things first, let's get this out of the way, right? You're going to have a bias based on your experience, right? And, and so let us know first and foremost, right away, what Calis Illustrissimo affiliation system or school you love and and you belong to not to say you're not open to others but yeah who are you with so definitely system? open to others and i think that i've proven that with my track record the fact that i trained with avenir first which is the majority of ki you know david gould um yeah there we go uh -huh. that's a cool banner right yeah we're gonna talk about that for sure um okay. The KI through the Lomeco lens through David Gould, who is an unsung hero, as far as I'm concerned, just just really, you know, low key. Burton, and now ultimately, you know, grew Brandon under the Ricketts sanction. Okay, so, uh, okay, can you just li list it one one, one more time? So, sure. Abenir, does does that? Yeah, is that so. A so what happened was just to give you know not going a long tirade right here i was you know when mark wiley's book came out i became immersed and just with ki the problem was there was just nobody around for his teachers mark wiley was a total but he was moving all around i couldn't track him down or get a hold of him nobody on the east coast whatsoever so finally mm -hmm. I contacted Bong Avenir because I, I, I saw right away it was K.I., even though it, his name was basically just his surname as far as his, his style. Mm -hmm. And he says, look, I have this guy in Chicago. He just you know moved there from the Philippines. His name is Marvin Mendoza. And I'm like, perfect. This might be the clean. And at that point, to be honest, I kind of surrendered to the fact that I may not get K.I., but I said, well, you know what? 
perhaps this is the next best thing. Um, I like what they do, what I've seen on the videos. So I went there, a wonderful experience with Marvin, really got the kind of the nuts and bolts of KI through mm -hmm. their lens and flavor. And after that, I wanted more. I'm like, gosh, you know, this is this is truly what I've always been looking for. So then Burton, I was a, a student of Burton already. And one day he goes, look, you know, I know you really want KI and, and all that. And, you know, at this point, I'm borderline obsessed. So he says, look, you know, I just want you to know my background. I definitely I was over there. I trained with them. In this and I'm like, you know what he's offering? I'm like, fine. At that point, I also started traveling down to Mississippi pre-COVID 2017 to see David Gould, who was under Edgar, P.G. Edgar, who obviously, you know, Lameco is 50% KI. All the edge weapon material, for the most part, is KI with some PTK in there. Um, and um, so I, I got his lens. And then ultimately, of course, Vico and Brandon via Ricketts Sanction. So straight up question, Dean. So you train KA under multiple people. Fundamentally, is it is it very different? We're not, we're not talking about the personalities or the teaching styles of these individuals, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, is it more or less, you know, you got your Engano and the media Freile and the yeah, okay. and, and all no. the loop. great question. So they each, okay, so when you look at the core strikes, they're going to be very similar. They're, some of the names might be different. Decadena, Arco, for instance, for example. Um, some stress the Aganos more, okay? Um, Burton stress to me, find the gaps. If you look at El Shismone sparring, it was always long range. He was find the gaps. I mean, as you know, you can hit somebody before, during, or after, okay? Yeah. So, so find the gaps when using those trees as your kind of barometer. So Burton was very instru instrumental in that. So not so much on the defensive movements because uh, he basically was honest with me. Some of these are going to be hard to pull off, you know. Yeah. Um, he was very <clears throat> frank and honest in that way, and that's something I kind of appreciated. Um, sure. David Gould, I'm telling you, people just don't because he's just so low key. That guy is um, probably up to date one of the best people I've ever been in front of. Um, his hmm. fraction in Una Vagata is on top of this world. Um, he does the most. But when you say Una Pulgada, that's just one's ability to manage and gauge distance and proximity, right? Exactly. It's this whole one-inch exactly. principle. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're absolutely correct. So is it truly an inch? No, maybe it's two, maybe it's three. But the point being right. is it misses you. In other words, what Dave always is telling me, there's a constant yin and yang opportunity and threat. So while I'm getting away of the threat, do I have opportunity? So maybe I made my business adjustment for work too much. Granted, I right. made the threat. I have no opportunity. So that's the balancing act where you just want to miss. So you do have opportunity. Sure. He is just unbelievable in that arena. So that I got that. That was to this day still is probably the biggest as far as tax tactics. David Gould right. never gave me a drill. He's yet to give oh, me yeah. a single drill. I love that. So that means you guys must have sparred a lot then, right? Oh, I, yeah. And yeah, it's just, yeah. And he's, again, I mean, yeah. um, I, again, I'm not saying there's not like him. I'm saying as far as my experience, right. the present date, you know. Um, so outside of full speed with competitive energy involved, right, I think this una pulgada thing is pretty much dead in the water like it's it doesn't really exist in demos it cannot really exist yeah. in consensual exchanges it can only really exist when there's competition between two practitioners because that blade is going to be moving faster with more intent right you're such on the right track so look at this oh dang he's standing up so this is where okay so if i want to employ the tact of una pulgada the moment I make contact, whether it's a crusada, a pluma, mm -hmm. a frile, there's a beat. Yeah. Okay. And that's also going to affect praction. But if this is coming and I do maybe a lassico, for instance, but much to your point, 
if you were doing defensive movements, you're doing Australia, whatever, outside Australia, you know, your Friday, you know, whatever you're doing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're not going to be work. You're indirectly. It's going to be tough for you to f focus on those act, those tactics, because you, like you said, it's going to be kind of more in a live format. Yeah. You know, yeah. For, and, so, and there's, there's so much right. respect in, in Filipino martial arts. And I often see demos in Calis Illustrissimo where it's like, wow, that guy was amazing. But I'm like, man, that was that was his student. That was a demo. And you're going to want to make your instructor look good. I think KI really shines they do un want. under pressure, under it. pressure, man. I love Calis Illustrissimo. I, yeah. I'm not a student like you guys are students, but I, I take the fundamental concepts of it. And I'm like, mm. oh, I don't always say this. I'm like, oh, that exists in this system too. It just looks a little bit different or or this is, yeah. it's the same universal combat principle, but expressed differently, right? Yeah. Um, so who amongst your, your, your instructors do you think was the most technical? Well, just, I want to piggyback on something you said and then I'm yeah. gonna, I'll answer. You're actually right. What, let's face it, KI is aesthetically pleasing. It's really attract. It's I mean, it's incredible to watch. I mean, like it's their, their spot, of, their Punta Daga is. I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, it is you know the plumas, you know the vert. I mean, it's really nice to watch. It really is. Um, There's you know, a stoic looks, energy to it and a confidence when absolutely. expressed. It's absolutely. like bikinis, like rah, we're gonna yeah. get you. And and Khaleesi Illustrissimo is like, yes, you can try. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. And that's why I think these two pair so well together, right? Like when no, you're, you're sparring a KI guy, Sean Zerger and Fabriz, Fabrizio for me yeah. are the two top guys in terms of people who give me problems yeah. when we spar like full with dulled out machetes. Yeah. They're stoic. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like they don't give – they don't they don't give you much in terms of tolerances for mistakes. And right. Because there's a whole thing of well, I don't know how deep you want the the, cir the small circling. In other words, you should not see this in KI. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're saying that's too big? It's too right. It should be, I mean, very small, you know, small recovering, yeah. you know. Um yeah. so why? Because it's a freaking sword, as you know. Yeah. So you're 12. So you come across like this. I mean, so taking account for, again, not being countered, which I'm sure is, it kind of yeah. sounded like when you were going against Sean and Fabrizio, that's oh, I guess, killer what you were dudes. experiencing. You know? It was like a Venus flytrap. It was, it's so inviting because it's, and I think this is the concept of Engano, where it they, they almost present these openings. To mm -hmm. deceive you into thinking it's an opening, and then before That's you it, know yeah. it, ah, you That's got it. So, a you know, everybody thinks that Ganya is this. Okay, I'm gonna go, you know, cross cutting. I'm gonna give you the open, and then I go to the close. I mean, yeah, that can't be a Ganyo, but yeah. there's so much more to the Ganyo as you just mentioned than changing your angle of your strike. Your trajectory. So, is is in Ganyo then like the principle of deception? Is that all that is instead well, of a specific yeah, move? It could be a presentation of what's an open. I mean, mm. not, you know, you got, so let's, I mean, not the I love parallel. KI. In other words, okay, we know we associate the five ways attack with JKD for good reason. However, KI had it long before JKD. <laughs> you know, I mean, Illustrissimo, while it wasn't categorized as that far as tactical sure. concern, but they were there. And this goes for other FMA systems too. I'm not just saying <laughs> KI has, you know, has those right. as well. I mean, let's be real. It, it goes. I mean, these are universal and timeless combat the, principles. There you right? go. Some just, Deception. Just made them famous actor for you. Just one hundred percent right. They're not just unique to JKD or FMA. One hundred percent right. Yeah. Right. Um, um. Okay. I gotta get back so, to your question though. You asked, far as tactics or, or mm, yeah, more, who, who's the most technical? Who's the most technical instructor in Calisi Illustrissimo, according to? Vico is very technical with strikes, you know, where you, you know, I mean, the proper mechanics, very deep into that. David Gould, technician, as far as management of space, time, distance, 
all that. So it's a really nice kind of difference between the two because why they're both very technical, they're technical in different aspects. David right. Google goes, look, I don't care. I don't, I'm not looking for perfect. I want it to be right. Refinement, the elusive perfection will come over time. I want it to be right, but I'm more, I'm more important that you are understanding where you need to be, where you don't need to be or shouldn't be and all that. So very deep and into that Vico, have you looked, have you ever seen Vico striking? No, no. I mean, he's probably, he's, he just, he just looks good. Yeah. <laughs> he just, you know, he's, he's very good. And so, Brandon too. I mean, I, you know, I, you know, how old is Brandon? This was incredible. 28 years old. Wow. So he must suck. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, he gets that right. He must get that a lot. Like, who, yeah, well, how good can you be? A so Tony. This kind of give you some historical context here. Sure, sure, sure. I like Tony Brandon, Martin. by the way. In case people didn't get my sarcasm, yeah, He's yeah, a cool yeah. Cat. Um, so I was taking private with Brandon. You know, we got getting to know one another better. And I said, and I'm like, you know, it kind of came up to a conversation. I'm like, well, wh you know, why are you not propagating? your father's lineage more and all this and mm. his answer at the time i'll never forget this because there was a there was an aspect of empathy for me at the same time like this is ridiculous you need to and he says well who who am i at my age and i said brandon you need to mm. go out there and push your father's lineage don't be concerned about what age you are you have something to offer the ki community so he started you. getting more privates uh more exposure and mm -hmm. um but what i think he's doing for 28 years old i think is phenomenal um i just does he have he his own system now yeah, or, or the i mean is it know, is ricketts uh, a system it, no so ricketts is just one of the lineages basically okay. so it's, he just calls it khaleesi lustrissimo then um yeah khaleesi but he's also saying but now i just saw a groupie con uh page rather and it said ricketts <laughs> fma so I'm not sure what's going on with that, but I have got a chance to talk to him yeah. tomorrow night. Um, but what he's doing at his age, the maturity he's exhibiting, yeah, and people are attracted to him because there's an honesty about him. He's charismatic, but yet so approachable, incredibly technical, and mm -hmm. he's just there's just something radiant about him, and and I'm just so glad that he's coming more out in the forefront now as opposed for to him. kind of staying behind the sidelines, you know? Do you know how old he was when um, when his when his father passed? He was, I believe, gosh, if the, I think the father passed in 2011, if I'm not mistaken. So I think he was 11. Don't point out, but 11. He was young. Yeah, 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 he was in right. his teens, you know. I can kind of understand a little bit his, um, you know, some some of these natural insecurities, right? Because how good could you have been at eleven? And then, you know, yeah. you of course you had access to to all the videos and all that stuff. But I think his older brother was extremely instrumental, Bruce. There you go. I mm -hmm. think from from how you've described Brandon to me, um nothing but positive stuff but if i'm i'm gonna sort of read between the lines he he had he had to put in the work and i and i think maybe there's some insecurity about just carrying the lineage because uh, i'll be straight up there's somebody you know in line to be the next head of piquiti tertia and you know by all accounts he he wants that role but the community doesn't recognize him as somebody who is you know yeah. who can live up to it, which is fine. Like people grow into these roles. Right. But it seems yeah. to me based on what you've said that Brandon, as he is right now, is already a great instructor. I think so. And I think he's so open minded too. he takes into account your body type, mm -hmm. um, your past training. It's he's there's no rigid like, you know, and all that while he'll definitely push and I, I don't know if this is even correct, you know, saying pushing it, but like he'll, while he'll push the nuances, 
of as far as lineage. I mean, you know, do you know what makes, in other words, have you seen, do you know what makes the, the you know, the Kiro, I mean, the, the Rickett sanctions known for? No. So the, the Rickett, the Rickett system hips. is known for something? Hips. hips. Oh, S Dean, before you, before you show me the hips, yeah. I already love where this is going. There's so much FMA without hips. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just for show. So in other words, let's take their, let's take V, sometimes it's called uh, V, <clears throat> V Arco V. So in slow motion, it's V Arco V. But watch the hips. Boom. I mean, yeah. There's no mistaking when you see a Ricketts practitioner, you're going to see hips. I mean, there's, um, why? I'm sold. I'm so why? yeah. So, so what why? the moment you said hips, <laughs> old man still carrying you cracking me up. The hips don't lie. Um, that is that Shakira? That is Shakira. Hips don't lie. Oh, Shakira. <laughs> Who's that old man? Old man still can. Isn't that a great name? Yeah, I'm, I love this guy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the engagement of the hips, man, is critical in all fighting, right? The and yeah, we and often see generation. a lot of FMA. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I see a lot of FMA. And, you know, I'm guilty of it, too, when I want to look nice and pretty, where I don't engage my hips. I just, it's about the the, the trajectories and the angles mm -hmm. and the directional changes. That has its place. But, man, I, and, and when I when I spar... I don't really hurt my opponent that bad. Like I'm not a very powerful striker, but I've faced a lot of powerful strikers and it sucks to face them. <laughs> I don't know me trying to be Tinkerbell, but yeah. So the like, Ricketts yeah. is known for hips. 100%. And where that came from is, you, in other words, okay, let's take the, the knowns of KI. Okay. So why okay. you see like subtle differences, their approach, their methodology. Well, let's look mm -hmm. at their backgrounds. Okay. okay, so Brandon's Preach father brother. had a very karate sagasa kicking, all that it was a phenomenal kicker. I mean, mm -hmm. um, Bird told me like his sidekick was you know off the charts. So that power, I mean, just that. Also, Ricketts' father liked boxing. So, dude, I'm gonna take Ricketts, <laughs> freaking <laughs> KI boxing and hips. Go on, sorry, right? Wow, right. yeah, okay. So and don't so, get too biased now, Dean. Okay, don't don't be too biased. <laughs> yeah. So the late Montoni had the Balintawak background. So apparently, very uh, from my the people I talked to, they were very fast hands for the south mm -hmm. plates and stuff like that. Very good feet. I mean, supposed to be an incredible feeder. I mean, obviously Montoni was you know off the charts um, and all that. Now. And then when you look at Edgar, Edgar had the compo. Edgar, I mean, Edgar was short, stocky. I mean, Edgar, you know, Edgar brought it. Yuli had background from Blintwak, some definitely some more arts. I mean, when you look at Yuli's movement, um, so each kind of had something before they came. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, so, of course, that bled through. I mean, how could it not? <laughs> you know what I mean? So here's the argument. Well, you know, like one guy was telling, like I say his name, he goes, yeah, well, if you want to get the Pierce, you know, KI, okay, you go to, you know, Ricketts or you go to Kiro, don't need Ego's lineage. Well, first of all, it's the, the moment it left Tatang's hands, it wasn't pure anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're going yeah. to try to tell me Ricketts and Tony Diego is more pure than when you Lee takes Bahasabu, puts it over there. And just gives you KI. I'm training with Yuli now once a week now for the last couple of months. His pure KI is is on. It's it's incredible. So you're trying to tell me just because he formed Bahasabu that he doesn't have a KI lens? Are you kidding me? Ah, uh, I I I I agree with you, Dean. Yeah. In that people people often use authenticity and purity as a selling point. And, and I think people want that. People want to, to believe that they're studying as close to the original source material sure. as possible. But by all accounts, Tatan wasn't a very good teacher. He was somebody that people observed, took notes from, and then codified. But Tatang never had his actual system codified. He was Is that a correct? 
Okay. Right. It wasn't systematized. We know that. So, I mean, and much okay. to your point, what you just said. So look at this from a marketing standpoint. Okay. So you got, so look at Edgar. You, he formed, he was more concerned about Lameco. Okay. Yeah. Yuli, okay. Bahasabu and all that. Okay. So, all right. So they, so indirectly, they kind of took themselves out of the KR marketing just by virtue of nomenclature, what they, what they called their system. However, though, that mm -hmm. does not mean they cannot give you KR lines. So if you're looking, for, so if you're new and you're somewhat naive and somebody said, okay, well, if you want the real KI, go over there. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. you could just totally like miss out on somebody like Yuli or somebody under that was under Edgar or all yeah. that because of what? Like you kind of mentioned marketing and mm -hmm. kind of what you're hearing through. Sure. You know? Yeah. Pe people want that, that connection. Yeah, you know, I read I read an interesting book called uh, Predictably Irrational. It was a New York Times bestseller for years. And, uh, you know, one of the concepts that, that I really learned from that is this overvaluation of things that we own. Mm -hmm. Right. So like if we're trying to sell a car that, you know, that was the first car that we did <laughs> this in and we 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 souped it up when when we sell that car in the open market, it's going to be valued less because it doesn't have uh, this sense of ownership. And the same thing happens with, with martial arts. If you take mm -hmm. Cairo or Ricketts or this version or that version, you're going to want to sell that, mm -hmm. right? And not overvalue it. Or as I, I think the true, and this is infusing my thoughts and opinions again, I think, Authentic Calis Illustrissimo is in the expression of it. It mm -hmm. isn't in the in in a technical manual. It isn't in you know. Oh, my teacher was spent more time with Tatang, therefore this is more authentic. Which is that's that's how it goes, right? Um, by the way, I wanted to mention you be, you've been taking lessons from uh, Yuli Romo. Correct. I saw some old footage of him move. <laughs> it's freaking. Yeah. And I was like. Strange movements, but incredible in its application. He was very yeah. playful, yeah. almost like this, I don't want to say dance, right? But there was a, a lightness and a playfulness, which is really a confidence in his movements. And he was like, ba 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 ba. And I was like, wow, yeah, I know the one Romo, man. Talking about it was just here. I mean, here's the thing he, I believe, he's 75 years old. And if you see the way he moves now, I mean, so in other words, he, he records the things on Zoom for me while we're doing I mean, he, I mean, for 75 years old, the way he moves, it's incredible. I only can hope to, you know, even partially move like that when I'm 75. Um, but he's, but to say he is just incredible. I mean, he just is. the way, now he's got, but he also has different things. Mm -hmm. that he kind of stressed and all that. Yuli was one of those guys, and this is what makes Yuli to me special. And could you say, quote unquote, a missing link? I think there's an argument for that. And I'll kind of, and this is why I feel that way. And here's what frustrates me about the CAD community. Most of what we see of Yuli Shusumo is on the YouTube videos from the Ricketts collection when he was in his twilight years. And what was he doing? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hanging set. Yeah. Why? Because he was in his twilight years. So was mm -hmm. that to say he was just he wasn't doing other footwork when he was younger? So so mid 70s, yeah. Tony Diego met him. I think it was a few weeks, a month thereafter, Yuli came very shortly after Mong Tony. So when I look at now, I've been very lucky and I'm very appreciative of that the privy to see some of the early 80s videos of Billy Shisimo. You can't believe the way he moved then, comparatively speaking, to what we're seeing today on YouTube. It is completely night and day. So when I see Yuli now, I see the closest thing of what I witnessed from the Ricketts, again, video library of Billy Shisimo. So when people say like, well, you know, he, you know, he, he, he you know, he moves like Billy Shisimo. Half these people haven't even seen their, I should say, not half, actually. 
the good majority have never seen Ilse Schmo in those early 80s moves because they don't have yeah. privy to any of the video. So how can you say that? And then by and furthermore, in conjunction, say that perhaps again, you Lee, that he doesn't have the true expression. <laughs> it's, it's it's ridiculous. You know, Dean, um, if I may interject, this is a problem that I see in Pikiti Tersha. I'm sorry to make this about Pikiti Tersha, but I mean no, but you it, the it, parallel a point that you want to make. It, so no, yeah. Just just the idea that this problem exists in other FMA systems where people try to copy how the system founder moves way later down. Like they're already old. Like people there are new Pikiti Tertia practitioners now mm -hmm. who try to move like Grand Muhan Lee guy now. And I'm Which dude, you absurd. It's ridiculous. And then they're they're going, well, it's authentic. Like no, well, it's authentic for him it's because he's eighty-two. In 2022 now, I mean, right? right? And so I think a lot of these concepts need—you really need to have these concepts pass through you, and you need to spar. You need you need some competition to see how you can express these concepts. Otherwise, you're just you're you're copying a, for lack of a better term. You're copying a, a physically degraded version of what you think authentic is because people change. Like, like Tatang mm. Illustrissimo was different when he was in his 40s, right? And then people are watching videos of him in his 70s. And I'm like, this is the proper Lutang. Well, well, and actually, the videos I referenced, so in other words, he passed away in 97. I, I think he was 94. So the videos, the bulk of the videos that are seen on youtube are somewhere, somewhere early 90s so so he was late 80s and you know, all that so yeah exactly to your point i mean if that's what you're modeling okay i and but again but here's the thing though mm -hmm. no Still nothing. Yeah, no, I definitely still not hearing you. If anybody's watching, are you able to hear me? I can't hear Paulo. All right, Dean, can you hear me now? Oh, perfect. Yeah. Much oh, better. wow. Much. Woo Damn. Thank you, much, guys. Much better. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. You don't need to, you don't need to tell me, man, about technical difficulties on the interview. Man, this is rough, bro. This is rough. <laughs> Thank you guys oh. for bearing with us. I, I hope you guys are finding this conversation um, illuminating. Yeah. I'm going to get to some of your questions now. Um. All right, Dean. We've talked about Ki, kind of yeah. gone on a on a tangent. I tell there. you, just off a side note, you mm -hmm. want to know Cat, who knows a lot. Who he's just not coming out, and I hope he does. And I consider him my senior in Ki. We talk once a month, and I, I just pick his brain, and he's so helpful. And um, Elric. Elric. Yeah, Elric he's knows more like... than people think he does. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I like Elric. He knows yeah. he knows a lot oh, of no, things. I, um, like I told you in the beginning of the show, like, you know, Elric is man. That, yeah, you and Ember just are special. Yeah. So um, I really like Elric. He set up a gauntlet for me when I was in Manila and he made me spar a bunch of people, which was really good. And Elric is actually, here's why I like Elric, by the way, for 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 you guys who don't know who Elric is, he is just a... I mean, in some ways, he's behind closed doors, right? In FMA, he yeah, knows a lot of people. I mean, he's a secret holder kind of guy. He, he's got a wealth of information in so many arenas, though. Oof, he's kind he's of a researcher. Really awesome dude. Really awesome dude. 
You know, I went to his house in the Philippines and I trained a little bit with him and his brother. And I filmed it. And then at the end, they're like, you can't show any of that. And I'm like, don't you know? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for this burden I carry with me now. Thanks. Yes. Thanks, Jun. This is. Well, one day you'll get a call. Paulo, you may release it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I have I have stuff like this from a lot of people. You know, yeah. people think that you know I because because I post so much and I express my opinions, they think that it's all out there. I've got a ton of footage that's like never to be released. But speaking of Elric, he's got some questions for you, and we're gonna get to the point of this podcast. Thirty five minutes in, it was a nice sure. little diversion. Yeah. Okay, Dean. Um, from Elric, what? was your goal or what were your goals for doing this interview series okay so my goals were there were a few first and foremost i really wanted to bring exposure to this art that i would become to love and i i want to flourish in and finally found my home to refine till my passing um so and i wanted to people other people to see this but I wanted them to see it through the lens of all the sanctions instead of me just picking out one and all that. I wanted to give everybody an opportunity to be shown, to express, to demonstrate basically what they do under the under the sun, KI. So we have the planets under the sun. I want all the planets to showcase. Secondly, my other big goal was by doing this, and we get people together in the same interview and all that who normally might not be, would this ignite some fusion, some joint ventures to train together? And we already seen evidence that, matter of fact, Elric and Brandon just last weekend went to Kiro to go train. So it has to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. So those were like my bigger goals my last goal which was the least insignificant me just getting more knowledge from listening to all these people because i far from know it all i concern myself on the bottom i'm concerned they're all my seniors you know what i mean so to me it, it was a wonderful learning opportunity to hear from all these different people and their interpretations their experiences stories and etc That's really good. Um, and you know what? I think to a, to a degree, that's that's what we're all trying to do, you know? Like, again, going back to this sense of ownership, when we practice something and we find great joy in it, we just want to share that, right, with as many people as possible. Unfortunately, sometimes that comes out in the wrong way. And sometimes even when we have the best of intentions, and I found this, I, I mean, you have great intentions with FMA Discussion, I think everybody knows that but even then when you share something that you love or that you find value in there there are some people whose first natural reaction it is to go that's wrong or that sucks or this is better you should try this other thing and it, it almost seems like an insult to the thing they love when we share the thing we love Right. And yeah, that's emotional. Yeah. There's emotional attachments that come in. I've seen every, I see it every day in FMA discussion. You can act, you can be as objective as humanly possible. And it just is not going to matter to a few because of attachments or affiliations right. or they don't want, like, matter of fact, like all the nice stuff I was putting back then. Like, you know, I knew there were people that knew it was good but they were walking by it like this and pretending not to see it because they have to look themselves in the mirror now and all that emotional and disconnect but so much to your point you know totally agree yeah and that's unfortunate so just a piece of advice guys because this is how i've lost but (laughs) i've been at this social media thing for a, a little while and i've uh i've noticed something it's you know, I think I think Dean FMA discussion is is a big part of your journey and, and you use that to to express what you find value in. And I do the same with mine. Yeah. Um, whenever I cycle through my interests with an FMA, it's almost like, you know, how when people watch professional sports and they love this player so much because of what they do for the team. 
Mm. Like they love this play, but the moment their jersey changes, all <laughs> right. of a sudden they're a, they're an asshole. <laughs> yeah, they're you know, right. it's the same player. It's yeah. the same player. You know, so I found guys, you know what I mean. It's like yeah, exactly. So it's like you know I love Bolin to walk, or I love Piquet Tersha, I love Kalisi Lustrisimo, I love Estacado de Campo, and it's like mm. when I show one good thing from one system, they're like, well that exists in Piquet Tersha, no, and because. <laughs> It's so, and it's like people don't understand. Like, I love Filipino martial arts so much right. that I'm going to move around. Yeah. You know, and I, look at me. I mean, look at you. I, I mean, went from Ensemble, Sayoc, Atienza. I don't tell anybody this, but I'm certified in Dose Paris. I just don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a decrease. Like, um, to. <laughs> Burton, Avenir, Amok. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I just love it, and I, I, I'm, I'm a um, methodology geek. I want to know your, I want to know your what and how you apply it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm just fascinated by that. But I finally found my home, Ki. So, <laughs> Ki is it, huh? I All think right. so. I can't. Ki I, is I okay. Yeah. yeah, it's you know, on, never that's ever. sword art. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on. Um, okay. What uh, next question from Elric? Was there a particular lens you were trying to understand Ki through? Great question. And I would say if you one historically. Okay. So here's. Hmm. In other words, some of the disappointment. I, sh I shouldn't say disappointment. Um, that I didn't find out. I really wanted my one of my goals was going to this. Um, on the lower end of the spectrum was I really want to historically find out if anybody could give some background when during Illustrious most formidable years when he was spent it down in Mindanao with the Sultan, the bodyguard, something happened there. And what I mean by that something, um, you know, there was an obvious influence of tactics and just techniques that made him different from the other uh, as far as others in the family art, his uncles, for instance, and his time with Pedro Cortez, the bounty hunter. I was hoping to get a little more on that, um, but that, but you know, but still, though, overall, I did definitely get more information historically speaking. So I definitely came out of it more knowledgeable, mm -hmm. you know. So you know, one thing that I didn't get to, but still overall i'm still very happy with the findings okay uh, out of all the interviews that you did um who was the most articulate like who explained it at, at a high level i thought mark wiley did a phenomenal job and here's there's somebody else too that obviously he's not coined a pillar or, or significant but man that guy what are, what are truly understands what illustration was about talk to him just yeah. listen yeah folks if you're watching this i really urge you to watch the first one it's mark wiley and brandon ricketts mark wiley i man listening to that guy i thought he did really well um who else i thought sean zerger did well um i like sean to call him yeah. sword uh, jesus because he yeah. looks like jesus <laughs> um <laughs> You know, they all, you know, I got to be, they, they all did well, but far as like who really articulated well and had exposure to the different ones, I think yeah. it, just because, and, you know, why? I mean, Mark Wiley's written books. He was over there early. He trained, yep. you know, by mere exposure, you yeah. know, anything else, you know? I mean, some guys, honestly, teaching is a separate art. Speaking is a separate art, right? So I can understand I mean, the guy's an author, you know, exactly. whereas someone yeah. someone like Yuli Romo, for example, he was my favorite interview out of the whole bunch, yeah, but he barely no. really spoke. Right. And it was all I about. Know. It was so sad. I wanted to bring him back on and he does. It just is not working out. And I understand why he doesn't want to do it. Um, but the re my that was probably I got to be honest, why you would. And I I know where you're going with this. I'm going to tell you because I truly enjoyed it myself. Yuli. I have a very really, everybody knows this kind of that knows in the case. I have a very soft spot for Yuli. Um, and it's always been there. I can't really articulate. It. There's just a soft spot. Um, so it kind of was heartbreaking when he went to Golig and it didn't get fully translated what he was saying. 
and mm. uh, which was a little disappointing. And um, and so I wanted to bring him back because Yuli has so much information from yeah. back. Um, you know, Yuli was one of those guys who. So here's the thing too, and this, I mean, we're going a little out of the question, but it, it's it's still going to be uh, relevant. So, okay, so we all know when somebody was feeding El Shisamo, there'd be guys either on the side, behind, taking notes, doing this, or till the camcorder came from Ricketts, early 80s. Yuli is one of those guys, he always said to me, I always would be on a back angle so I could see his trajectory. And why that's important is the Engano. So... The coming here and then that Arco coming through. And that's one of the things you these notice. Agano check mate. Agano check mate. So that's one of the big Yuli's things. And for you because of the angle Yuli is watching from, he was able to see this. So Yuli is fascinating when you yeah. listen to him and talk about like what he did back then and, and all that so i know i went a little off script there sorry no it's okay that that was a dual interview with somebody named ray ray galang is that ray galang so ray galang was part are, of are the, they are they buddies yeah no they get along yeah okay nice. but but they yeah. belong to two separate ki well the reason i put those two together they're they're the remaining two pillars oh they're pillar what are what are these pillars how many pillars what's well, the they're five, with... okay so that's a whole that's a whole thing within this thing is the pillars and how i believe well before i get to that let's okay so there were five pillars okay so okay uh it said that ray galan came up with the pillars during when he coordinated the australian trip and all that so the five pillars were ray so ray was the last person to come around train okay so obviously yuli obviously christopher ricketts tony dago and of course edgar those are the five. So the reason why they say that, because those are the ones that were propagating or trying to spread KI. Okay. Now, the problem with that is you had some other, I mean, you had Mong Romy, Mong Norman in Canada. Wait, now. Mong Romy is not a pillar? No. Well, that's See weird. I mean? See what I mean? Oh, I got you. Like, who gets, how do you become a pillar? Okay. I mean, well, Mong Romy should be a pillar, you know, like, man. But here's the thing, though. You got to look at it as a descriptive term. The problem is what happened was because these five were coined the pillars, I forget what year, it kind of took off. So people look at those five. Okay, well, hey, if you want to learn KI, those are five. And now these five, Ricketts and Diego's, the really two sanctions to do it because they stayed in KI. They didn't, they didn't rename their, you know, their, um, their styles or whatever, whereas obviously Edgar did, Lameko, Yuli, Bahatsabu, Ray Galang, Bakan Bakan. Okay. So, so we have those five. Now, obviously that caused dissension. People were left out. It, it made these yeah. five kind of, I mean, so for instance, look, if you look at Monromi, I mean, he was there early. How do I know he was there early? Ricketts videos. I've seen him at a younger age feeding Ilishisimo while Ricketts is filming. Oh, man. Well, so who invented the whole pillars thing? Ray? So it, Ray Galan? Okay. It said Ray Galan. But I think, so before we jump, so I think the intention was because he looked at himself and these fives, the ones that were spreading, propagating the art. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's fair. So, that's cool. So that's, that's what's told to me. Now, could there have been other reasons? Of course. You know what I mean? Could they have been self-serving? For sure. Of course. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And, like if know, I were to create a pillar system, I mean, I'm, I'm going to pick the people that I get along with the most and who obviously serve the system. Okay. Do you know, like, what happens when a pillar dies? I mean, is when there the a vote? When a pillar dies, okay, so let's look at this. So current status quo, we have two remaining pillars. We have Ray Galang, mm -hmm. Master Yuli. Obviously, you okay. know, uh, Edgar passed first the pass, mm -hmm. then Master Ricketts, and then mm -hmm. GM Tony. Okay, mm -hmm. so now, okay, so let's look at kind of who's taking over the system when they died. Okay, all right, so when we look at, so Tony Dago made, from my understanding, made Tommy die, 
thing in Canada, the air. He, he currently resides in Canada. Okay? okay. Towards out the West, Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, supposed to be, it's, I have old data exceptional. But because he's in Canada, it just made sense for Arnold to run the Carroll Group because Arnold obviously spent an incredible amount of time with Montoni. Arnold Narzo? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so obviously it just makes sense for him to do it. So, um, so there are some questions. Well, who run, who's the heir of Tony? So some, some people absolutely say it's master Tommy Dye. But if you look at who's really propagating Kiro section, it's obviously it's Arnold. And plus I think Canada right. kind of coined their name differently and all that. So that's, that's Kiro. Okay. Lameco, an unfortunate, uh, just unfortunate, period. <laughs> so when Edgar died, the nucleus of Lameco was the 25 backyard guys. Mark Denny, Steve Brody, David Gould, Felix Valencia, Roger Abulis, so on and so forth. When Leonard Roger Trigg. Died, uh, no, Leonard Trigg was no. not. No. Apparently he's the system. Yeah, because the wife. Because the wife appointed him that oh the Leonard fighters amazing, of the background group the 25 who edgar yeah. gave the special quote material from what i hear from many okay it's not me making this up okay um they kind of scattered so roger is perpetuating. i mean roger has calls his different name felix unfortunately just passed mm -hmm. david's in mississippi but all in all very little people are there's only a handful that are pushing Lameco. Yeah. So it's a mess. Not well, I shouldn't say a mess. That's wrong. I should say it's just nowhere as getting propagated to unfortunate circumstances. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like a mess to me, but anyway. Well, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, so back to the mean? pillars. Back to the pillars, Dean, yeah. real quick. Sure. There's there are two remaining pillars. Correct. Correct. I've I've not ever heard of a structure that's been held up by two pillars. I think if there's going to be a pillar system and it's going to stick yeah. and it's going to have some value, there ought to be some sort of a process whereby pillars are either delegated, earned, voted in. Right. Well, you know, you bring up an extra point and something I was thinking about. Okay, well, there's two. And I, and I dare bring this up because... You know, because the because the, the whole thing with the pillars caused a lot of issues. So, do we want to yeah. just let it just kind of fall by the wayside and let it go away, or do we want to replace the ones that unfortunately passed off? You know, that's the question. So, Monromi. So, obviously, let's go backwards. Okay, so they made okay. those five. Obviously, Monromi should have been a pillar based on the credentials that were being used to make the others. Mass Master Norman could have been, you know, there's an argument for him. Um, mm -hmm. So, but anyway, so you got two left. So we got Ricketts sanctioned. So when Ricketts moved to San Diego, he was basically just running out of San Diego with his sons. Unfortunately, he passed. Bruce went over, started restaurants. Brandon there. Now, Brandon, of course, now is Manila. So Brandon finally now has come out bringing his father's lineage more exposure now by actively teaching it but it was quiet so you see where i'm going with this who was the only really active community ours yeah AI? that's really you know, strange kiro and that does, and that's nothing against kiro it doesn't mean it's bad i'm just saying by virtue mm. of circumstances yeah kiro was the only one pushing AI. So why? Okay. So this, this is why I'm going with this. That's why a good chunk of the FMA community thinks that Kiro is the place to go to. And I'm not saying it's not. Yeah. And I understand why they feel that way because they're the ones that have been around longest and stayed kind of in the pure KI lane, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Whereas Lameco is, you know, I mean, you know, scattered and you know, all that and Ricketts while still there, didn't really come up because they're kind of in the restaurant business until recently. Brandon coming out, absolutely, sure. by Hatsubu. <laughs> you see what I mean? That kind of circumstantial, how these things kind of found the place, and what yeah. we, now what we have status quo. 
It's strange. Um, here's a comment from Romeo Bravo. Two uninformed and unknowledgeable opinions. I, referring no. to you and me. If that's who I think it is, um, he's somebody you want to immediately block. Uh, well, you know, I, I don't want him out of the FMA discussion. As a matter of fact, I know it is. He's just yeah. an absolute troublemaker. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but, and and there's a reason I brought it up. This yeah, there's a, there's a reason yeah. I, I bring him up. There's a lot of these guys. I mean, obviously, Romeo Bravo isn't his real name, right? Yeah. You're Dean Franco. I'm Paula Rubio. We're expressing yeah. our opinions, and people are going to disagree. People are going to agree, and that's that's fine. I think he's but a at PPK least guy. This guy? I don't know. I, sounds like I could be I could be mistaken. He lives out west. Yeah. Washington. Well, you know, people like Romeo Bravo, and there's he's using a pseudonym. There's a lot of people who are feeling hurt and they're feeling insecure, right? Mm -hmm. For better or worse, Dean, I've built a social media platform. You've built a social media right, platform. Here's somebody. <laughs> here's somebody who may have been in it for far longer than us, Could whose be. opinions are being ignored. And so, like to people like Romeo Bravo. I mean, my, my advice is to just work a little bit harder, let some of those scars heal. Mm. And and the thing is, it's not terribly difficult to start a platform and it's not terribly difficult yeah. to build a community and an audience. Um, but I think there are a lot of people like Romeo Bravo out there who just, they live this perpetual cycle of regret and insecurity, and the way they, they the way it manifests is by spam, trolling, commenting yeah. on, you know, on social media platforms. Our, our intentions are good, and yeah, I and, think and, and people know that. So yeah, yeah, and and that's that's okay. And I, I hope that doesn't rock your world too much. Let's leave them up here. Romeo Bravo no, thinks these are two no, 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 uninformed no. and unknowledgeable yeah. opinions. And obviously, he's entitled to his opinion and all that. Absolutely. And I just hope I'm correct in the person I'm referencing, because if I'm not, apologies. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's see? the thing. He he doesn't even see? have the... There you go. Okay. There you go. But he doesn't even have the integrity yeah. to put his real face and his real name to the opinions that he holds. Right. Like I've made mistakes in expressing my opinions. Right. I'm sure there are some things you may have expressed that maybe you wish you didn't. Uh, yeah, but at no, least. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Of but course. at least. Yeah. Like yeah. here. Here we are, man. You know, right. and I think there's a lot of people in, in the in the Filipino martial arts who are kind of borderline that. And, and to them, I really want to make it known that I'll help you build your your social media platform. You know what I mean? Like I want all of FMA to grow. Right, because um, if we yeah. all grow, I mean, right. you raise a little, right. I mean, like, and obviously you've substantiated by helping us get more subscribers in FMA discussion. So your track record speaks for that. So, I mean, Thanks, bro. Um, and here, here's Elric's comment. You are two non-insider opinions, which on one level is good. It hopefully helps insiders see how outsiders see and view everything. So... If I may, I'd like to share an analogy. And this is something that I shared sure. in a conversation that I had. Um, it's, it's about the house smell. The house right? smell? Okay. The, the house smell. When, you're, when you are constantly in one environment, yeah. you begin to develop desensitizations to... Your th those immediate surroundings, and when I, what I'm what I'm trying to get at is that, from an outsider's perspective, who who just walked into Calistrisimo, I can say, mm -hmm. your house stinks. There's a smell, yeah. and they're like, what? What yeah. smell? <laughs> what is this smell? <laughs> what is <Right>? this? <laughs> what is this smell? It smells normal here. Well, yeah, it smells normal here. You've been living in because this living house. Here. 30 years. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so I fully acknowledge that my opinions about Calais Illustrissimo is, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say it's uninformed. It is uninformed. 
Yeah. It's it's or it's less informed. Well, I gotta tell right? you, no. Here's the thing. Do you know back in the day when I got Mark Weisman, I believed in the five pillars. I was hook, line, and sinker. Those yeah. five were it. Well, what happens? You get in the community, right? You see, you listen, yeah, you experiment, you open up your mind, and then before you know it, you're looking back at the and you're like, oh. <laughs> that's what happened you know? well man look at the end of the day all of these filipino martial arts systems are are either founded by or run by filipino guys mm -hmm. like th th in in some respects they're special and i appreciate them but at the same time it's not like they're running multi-million dollar corporate businesses yeah, not, right I, I with am, solid yeah. infrastructure yeah. and logistics <laughs> and, and it doesn't work that way and so there's a lot of falling out of love that happens in Filipino mm -hmm. martial arts, right? Yeah. There's a lot of, oh, I thought he was this, but then I saw him drink and started talking all this racist <laughs> stuff. Like there's a, there's, they're just Filipino guys, guys. They're right. just regular Filipino guys, right? Or, or white guys or whatever white. guys, right? So uh, did he, <laughs> did he have more, wait, did he have more, um, Paulo, that's why you'll <laughs> he's like, Paulo, invited. that's why you'll never be invited. <laughs> First of all, Elric, I love dying. Okay. I love Bagoong. Balut doesn't even smell bad, but it, it's pretty gross. But anyway, um, hey, do look. You have more, uh, Dean works hard to stay now. Yeah, I, I do. Thank you. And it's not easy all the time. <laughs> um, if you think about how much Dean loves Khaleesi Lestrissimo and the fact that he invites ambassadors from every system mm -hmm. who's willing to come on his show like come on dean you're as close to perfect man as as one can get as far as being apolitical and drama resistant you know it comes with a price though man it does uh, <laughs> are you a millionaire yet from doing fma discussion or like... <laughs> that i tell you <laughs> That that whopping fifty every few months, man. <laughs> fifty bucks, baby. <laughs> I don't know what to spend, but even then, bro, like you, you're, you're, you, you take the earnings from FMA discussion, and you don't even keep it. You know, and it all goes to charity. Yeah, we collectively buy a knife. agreed on that, and you know what? It does. I tell you what, though, it just it feels good to do. We all collectively yeah. agreed on it, and. Yeah. You know what? We're absolutely all fine with it. Hey, did did I uh, Albert have more questions? I just feel bad if um yeah, he had a few questions, but you kind of got to it in a way. Question number three was did your appreciation and understanding of the art evolve through oh, your interview. It 100%. did 100 percent by talking yeah. to these Filipino guys. Absolutely, 100 percent And um Good. definitely like um Ray Floro, I mean, for instance. Like, for instance, talking to Ray Floro, you know, well, I, I had interviewed Ray before he came on for the KI themes, but in the KI theme, it was really interesting to hear how he has his less is more like seven things and, you know, what he uses for, I mean, just, you know, I mean, Ray, Flo, you know, again, some people say, well, you just don't truly KI. Um, well, I'm going to tell you right now, tactically speaking, he implements KI. Oh, damn. Straight up. I love <laughs> Ray Floro. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like for example, so I got to see his lens on that. Um, I got more understanding of Romeo via Ray and Sean, um, and what he stresses as far as principles and tactics. Mm -hmm. Well, who else? I'm trying to think. Um, Sixto was interesting um, to listen to. So as a whole, the answer to the question, 100. percent Yeah, 100. percent That's that's good to hear. Yeah. How many hours was it in total? Well, okay, I could watch any episodes. one of it. It's, so it's... I would say among the five, probably around it was nine hours, give or take, if I had to say. Damn. You know, probably, yeah, I would say maybe closer to the 10 side. But yeah, I would I would say somewhere around there. And I may do another one because a couple people that you should uh, you got left out should, and i man. want to be able like boss day and uh, i was hoping master norman will come on i well, here's a, here's a before we get to elric's next question there was a the disappointing thing of the of the epitheme episodes was that there were some who didn't come on which regrettably i wish they had 
I didn't really mm. get somebody addressing the Lameco sanction of KI. That was that was kind of a bummer. Um, Peachy didn't want to come on. I was kind of hoping she would. Yeah. Master Tom, Casey Ice, Vancouver there. I was hoping they would come on. Mong Romy. So I, so but. I feel despite the few that didn't come on, I feel I did get good representation because even mm-hmm. though Mongolia didn't come on, I still had uh, Ray Floro and Sean Zerger. Um, mm-hmm. Even though Peachy didn't come on, I still had the Carol Lens. So even though, and I kind of filled in gaps from the Mego side from my experience with Dave. So not a total, so by no means was it, there was a void per se, yeah, there's you know, always going to be a void, man. You know, yeah. there's always going to be somebody with an opinion yeah. that was so, unaccounted overall, for. There, it received great accolades. People seemed they were generally happy yeah. with what they heard. What you know, hearing from the different instructors from the different sanctions. So overall, I definitely think it was a success. You know, that's good. Hey, you should, um, you should get. I mean, you know, maybe down the road, but uh, Mount Henry Aspera. I've tried. Sure. We've tried to reach out to him, and he's he's a little reluctant because mm. of his of his English. But apparently, who's his top guy there? Um, starts with an A. Oh wait, his top student. Oh, uh, Asagani uh, Bon is that's he. Yeah, yeah. That guy's he, a great guy. No, no, RK is an like amazing it. system, man. No, 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 no. He's he seems like he is a great guy. He is supposed to coordinate with Henry and come on, and I'm hoping that materializes. Yeah. And so, you know, just to let you know, I, w- I was in Manila. I was at the internet with uh, Master Henry Aspera, and I got a ton of interviews with him talking about Tatang Illustrissimo. Mm. And I think I got some flack for calling him the missing link of KI. Um, but the stories that he told me about the time that he spent with Tatang uh, Illustrissimo, coupled with the fact that he's built like him. Very tall, like, long arms. Tall, lanky, yeah. And so yeah. I was, you know, that was a really illuminating experience for oh, I me. Imagine. No. I learned a lot. I Plus his boxing on. is killer. Yeah. I mean, I hope he comes on. I, I hope that works out. I, I really do. I, I It would be really wonderful to hear from him. I mean, the door's open. You know, and that's yeah. kind of why I left it with them, you know. I kind of like what RRK did in that in, in some ways they chose not to get into the infighting of KI and who spent time with Tatang and they just created their own thing. But let me tell you, man, RRK guys, number one, they can fight. Um, and Mong Henry is a is he is a mad genius. He yeah. is no. just yeah. absolutely incredible. Um, in fact, you know. As my Filipino martial arts journey continues, I'm rewatching some of the stuff that we did, and I'm 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 beginning to understand them a little bit better than I did. Yeah. In that moment, but I think, and, and let me say this: if you are studying Kalisa Illustrissimo, you should you should make a pit stop and learn some RRK. This guy is the guy right here. If you guys can see that on screen. Yeah. Okay, that's him. Yeah. And I'm it's hoping, a Ghani Abana. Yeah. I gotta. You know what? I'm gonna. I am just for kicks. I'm gonna reach out to him again. It can't hurt, right? I mean. Yeah. And you should. Yeah. You should reach out also to um, Elephant Cali guy Joseph Elephant. Oh, we had him on. Yeah. 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 He's a. He's a. He's yeah, a. No, no. Guy. He was. Um, matter of fact, I. Uh, I. Uh, Tom interviewed him, and he presented well. I mean, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. Uh, All right, Dean. Let's let's talk more about your experiences. Um, geez. Did we get through Alex's questions? I just don't want to. Yeah, I think we got through all of them. Oh no! Question number four from Elric. What questions were not answered for you? If I had to say, like a subject area or topics that maybe perhaps didn't get covered or or were partially covered, again, I would I would point to Ilishismo's time in Mindanao. I you know, I was hoping mm-hmm. to get maybe some more information on that. I was also hoping to get Yuli back on where I could have him with an interpreter and really extract from him just his solo time. Mm -hmm. Because Yuli lived with Illustrisimo for a while. 
Oh yeah, I didn't oh, know yeah. that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. So just I'd like that, I would that would have been nice. Um, what else? Far as yeah, what questions were not answered for you? Um, that was there. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. What others? I'm sure more will come to me. That's what immediately I remembered. You know, some um, what it would have been nice, and this would have resulted in maybe having Brand back on, but or better yet, Bruce, because Brandon wasn't even born yet. But some of the in the in-house training <coughs> at Ricketts. So what happened was a lot of the training was at Ricketts' house. Yeah, and they would feed a, a lot of the video footage I'm seeing was there, and basically people would feed El Chismo, and Ricketts would ask questions and film. It would be nice. That's why wow. I was kind of, maybe Romeo would come on because that would have been nice to kind of hear that interaction. You know what I mean? All of them together, how that sure. went. But Brandon, I can't expect Brandon. He wasn't even born then. And Bruce was a baby. So that's all yeah. the window. So who's left that was there? Romeo. So that would have been kind of neat. Just that dynamic with all of them together there training, how that went. Have you ever heard him speak? Who's that? Atangu Lestrisimo. Oh yeah. On any of the videos? Oh yeah. 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 Dark you know, boy, I've, yeah. I I don't think I've seen video of him talking. Yeah, that man. might be that'll be interesting for me. You know what else I have no idea? Whether or not he was a good guy. Like I don't know if he was an ass. I don't know if he was I mean, kind. You know, I talked to him says he was so he was approachable. He was kind of funny. He was giving with his time. Yeah. Um he was That's somewhat great. entertaining on the stories he told. Uh, you know, I mean, Burton, you know, here's a story Burton told me um, when Burton went over there, they were sitting on the park bench and somehow it came up about it was just one of his time in Mindanao when he kind of beheaded that guy over the beer incident. Um, and, was so and, and this is so ironic. <laughs> you recall the whole thing, Bong I'm near getting crap for the for the barong, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, guess what the weapon he used to be headed the person. <laughs> that was a, oh my gosh. For, for, well, now, for... Obviously, I, obviously, it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I can't test this, but this is what Illustrious Smoke told Burton, and this is what Burton told me that he used a barong, could lift up, could day in a real, boom, head, rolling down, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but when the point I'm getting at, when he was, when he was telling Burton the story, at the time, he was kind of chuckling, and Burns just like, you know, Burns, you know, new to a new country. He's, yeah. you know, and you know, just the whole dynamic and experience. And here's this guy telling of this story of him taking this guy's head off. You know what I mean? And he's kind of chuckling about it. It's you know, you know what's you know what I, what comes to my mind, right? Like, first of all, I don't know if that actually happened, right? So I'm I'm going to reserve my skepticism, and that's okay, yeah. guys. Sorry, nobody, you know. Nobody filmed it. Um, there you go. But I, <laughs> and that, we get, and you know what? That's a valid point. And even though it's written in books, even though people tell it and all that, but do we do we know? No. Yeah. And here's the thing: I work with a lot. I've you know, in, in in my past work history, it was my job to speak with veterans of war mm. about their experiences, right? And I don't know, maybe it's a cultural Filipino thing that a man in his 70s or 60s can casually talk about beheading and taking the mm. life of another human being to a visitor from the West. Mm. Or maybe he was maybe he was being a 70-year-old Filipino man telling stories. Yeah. I mean, right. So, right. I mean, by all accounts, do we have proof? Know. And the obvious answer is no. <laughs> But here's the thing. There's going to be a lot of people who say, why would he lie? Why would he lie about that? I'm not yeah, saying he's lying. Right. Right. I'm just saying, saying some stories are are, are impossible yeah. to, you know, verify. And that's cool. But yeah. I've not met a single human being in my world travel, speaking with veterans of war, who tell those kinds of story nonchalantly unless we've been drinking a lot then mm. then it kind of comes out then it kind of comes out but who knows and yeah, would... exactly i mean you know another guy who's 
who, who had time with when he was still alive, Elric. You know, mm -hmm. Elric moved around him. Elric felt him. I mean, so, you know, um, there's another guy. You know, now I'm thinking about it, it might be worth me to get do another KI and get Elric on there too. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, as far as Elric's question goes, those kind of being the main two, his formidable years in Mindanao, what really took place there? You know what I mean? And the influence he extracted, which made him the fighter he was. Second question would be the dynamic and what really went on when in the Ricketts house, when they were doing the filming and all that, and just the, you know, just the intercommunication, the socialization among them all together. That would be yeah. kind of nice to hear about, you know? That would be cool. Yeah. Hey, here's a question I shouldn't be asking, but DJF wrote, we need a fighting game with FMA Masters. Imagine being able to play Tatang versus wow. Leo Heron or Kabbalist versus Leo Gaye. That's and funny. If, if there were... <laughs> Who's this? There do, you know, do you know this person? Or? No, I don't know this person. Okay. But I think if there would be an FMA Masters yeah. fighting game, I mean, there's got to be a level where they just kind of sit around and drink beer and yeah, after uh, after that, you're all, you're all gonna see him in Lumna Park. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But let me ask you this, right? And a, a question I shouldn't be asking: if all of if all of these pillars and 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 ambassadors, they were to just pick up pick up a, a sword and duel it out, who would be the last man standing? Dean Franco. What do you Bar think? Sanction or individual? No, fight to the death. But I mean, like, oh, so just individual, individual, at, the, each at their prime, each at their prime. <laughs> and that's what, okay, so that could this, be one of those questions you don't answer, but no, it, no, no, it's no, interesting. No, no. I mean, I'm, no, I'm gonna, and this, this has nothing to do with personalities and this and that. I'm gonna base on what was shared with me and what was shared okay. to me by an individual that Ricketts and Edgar were kind of construed as the fighters. And Yuli up there and all that. I know that. And you know, not that Tony didn't Montoni didn't spar, he did. So I don't want people jumping on the band, you know, and all that. I'm, yeah. again, obviously or I wasn't sparring, here. you know, means yeah. you went whatever. So but obviously I wasn't. Just an there. opinion. Yeah, this is what was shared with me by a few guys. And basically those guys said that those two generally were the fighters. Those are the ones who are more on the combative side, so mm -hmm. to speak. Didn't really why there was a technical aspect to them, but they were more in the fight. Because look at, I mean, and it kind of makes sense. I mean, look at it. What was Ricketts' background? Boxing, kickboxing. He was. Oh yeah. He was, he was sparring and fighting. Yeah. What man. was Edgar's? The compo. Jose Caballero. You don't think they mm. were mixing it up? I mean, and then his time with Gaye. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, yeah, so that so now uh, those two. Ooh. So so f final match would be between who Ricketts and if you're talking about like add uh, the pillars. Yeah. No, nah, well, whoever. I'm gonna go with the old clan. Yeah, old. And I'm gonna tell you, I've seen them both spar, and there's a video, and man, it's gonna be tough. Why well, Ricketts had that Eckies countering on the income and tax. Edgar had that non to oh, man. That's... So Ricketts v Salite in the finals. Is that what you're saying? We don't need yeah, to pick a winner. I gotta tell you, man. You, if you were to put your money on each one, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be wrong. I think it's gonna be <laughs> who. I'm gonna, I think it's gonna be that day. Who is who had a good night's sleep and who was on point? Literally. Yeah. <laughs> And so much depends on our, our emotional and physical condition when... Yeah, when, but again, that's not to say the other guys didn't spar. I don't want to get that misconstrued. You, you know yeah. what I mean? They all did. But everybody has their specialty. I mean, let's face it. Yeah. Uh, Ray Galan mm -hmm. was the organizer, the academia. He's put the stuff together. They mm -hmm. all have their piece. You know what I mean? So, uh, Do you know if Ray Galang and um, Mang Romi communicate? I don't think they do. Okay. You can if 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 anybody out there knows. It's just it's kind of I I'm pretty confident. Stas quo, I don't they don't know. They don't? 
Oh, that's interesting. Unless that's changed very recently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh man. I, I'm I'm self-monitoring right now. I'm I'm not asking questions that I really want to ask. You know, like what's the crappiest KI system out there? Oh what's the most <laughs> overrated KI system? Who's the biggest uh, loudmouth in Kalis Illustrissimo? Who is like, yeah, who's the most overrated Kalis Illustrissimo? I do want to touch, you know, I'm going to say this here. I'm going to kind of indirectly tackle some of your questions. Okay? Oh, shit. Okay. So there's one thing when I said that I was going to be honest about this and all that. And I'm actually, here's the thing. So, I, and this is in regards to Kill Group, who I have nothing against. So, people that are watching this, please, please just try to have an open mind and really listen to what I'm saying and try to convey here. This is not an attack on Kiro or its leaders and all that. I think Master Arnold is exceptional for many reasons. Yeah. I think the way he took care of Montoni, et cetera, from my here, I think just obviously seems like a gentleman as well. Yeah, outstanding human being. Yeah, Arnold Arzo. His dedication, loyalty, and all that. Um, yeah, one hundred percent. His students, though, and I'm and I'm so I'm talking about his students here. I think they are in. I think they are indirectly hurting him. And what do I mean by that? Okay, so based on the messages I get on Messenger regarding some of the comments they make in FMA discussion, I think they could be hurting him and all that. So now I have the appreciation for them being loyal to Master Arnold and Montoni. I, I, I really do. I have an absolute appreciation for that. However, though, some of their comments are being seen as like they're like the all-knowing and all this, and it's not going across well with the international community. And I know for absolute fact, Arnold has lost business from the international community based on what some of their responses or comments are. And that's all, you know, that's so, again, this is not an attack on Arnold. It's not an attack on Kiro. Okay. I have, if I didn't like them or didn't have respect for them, they wouldn't have been on the show as a guest. So I don't want to hear that. And you're not going to have any <laughs> momentum even trying that against me. However, yeah. they're students, and I've gotten a couple jousting matches with them because they say some stuff that they should really have thought about before they said it. Students are – oh, man, Dean, yeah. now you got me all fired up because, again, I'm going to take it back to the to PTK. But this is trying to help Arnold because, like, again, it's not Arnold. I don't. I really don't think it's no, Arnold. I really it's, don't. But it, students, it's not they, Arnold. It's not the system. But some no. students just like run their mouth way too much, and they think they're promoting and speaking on behalf of their instructor, where in fact they're damaging them. Students ought to shut the fuck up. Sometimes this happens a yeah. lot in Pikiti Tertia. This happens a lot in Pikiti Tertia, where. You know, students will run their mouth and they are abrasive and aggressive mm -hmm. and they think they're doing their system a favor, but they're not. They're mm -hmm. damaging its their the reputation. I know it's a fact. And here's the thing. I'm not, you know, obviously I'm not gonna go into detail who this message, but I've got messages like, What's what's going on with Kier? Why are they like that? How come I, I you know, I, I'm gonna tell you, it's honest. Yeah. And I know they've lost the international business. I know now. Does that can that be rectified? Of course. Should For they sure. be held where no, don't go in my no, I would never, you know, that's Arnold's pocketbook, man. I would never fool around with that. And I just say, hey, well, look, no. So what I tell you some of these people, I said, look, why don't you, you know, why don't you reach out to Master Arnold? Why don't you and, and all that? But some of his students would be better served if they really wanted to help Master Arnold and the Kiro sanction, they would just kind of yeah and again dean you're you're not talking about you know master arnold or Cairo. you're talking about specific yeah. individuals these specific individuals exist in every system yeah yeah right so yeah it's not just obviously unique to ki yeah, yeah but we're talking about ki now you know yeah. i've 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 had disagreements with bikini tertia practitioners heated disagreements and they don't know that their master actually agrees with me and sends me private messages and it's just like my god I get it. And again, predictably irrational. This book that I read, it talks about accountability and ownership. 
Mm. And it's just, I know you love this system and I know you want to promote it, but some people, man, they're just like, it's so, yeah. And what's so funny is some of the folk that are doing it, like a, like some of them are just so far off. Like one guy made this comment and I got, and um, I tried not to get heated, but I, I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. And, um, and it was basically how there were no issues before um, GM Tony died. And that's crap. Because the moment the pillars came, there were issues. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, so there were issues well before before Montoni uh, died. Now, there were did more issues come about. Yeah, that's fair. But to say there were right. no issues, I mean, so just stuff like that. They would just be if they just kind of thought before they commented. Yeah. They would probably be better serving to their organization. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. I. 100% get what you're saying and you know yeah I think you <laughs> you handle that quite well you know what it is and I want to mention this Dean like I don't I don't like these guys who who comment and speak mm -hmm. on behalf of their masters when when they don't have the clearance to do so and they're just running their mouth mm -hmm. but I have to acknowledge that they do that out of love like they that's my whole point the loyalty so i right, right. your point so i have the appreciation for that sure i get it right i get that you love mm -hmm. this thing so much that you begin to hate the other thing yeah and i i understand that again we we overvalue the things that belong to us and the things mm -hmm. that we invest in but sometimes how we manifest into words sometimes and it's Going back to that car, you know, that you love and now that you're trying to sell it and promote it to this market. Right. And you're like, well, I banged 16 chicks in the back seat. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's going to devalue the car. Yeah. <laughs> I don't right. want Just those stains. Get... Yeah. You know yeah. Right. The guy and... is coming along and taking a look at the back <laughs> seat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just to acknowledge that even these, you know, yeah, these people who end up damaging their systems by getting... Uh, you know, insulting and rude online. They're doing it out of love. And so if you're yeah. one of those guys who just talk uh, like, or just chill, just chill. Yeah. Matter of fact, one of the guys I'm talking about, and I have nothing against this guy. I, a matter of fact, I actually see and appreciate his um, emotion, like his, like his devotion to Mong Tony section. You, I mean, you can feel it. So that's why I didn't, go uh, like i just didn't like get emotional myself or attack him because i i was seeing that resonate through his comment but at the same time yeah. he's there is i think he's indirectly among others not just him i don't want to just pick on it but mm -hmm. long run i think they're indirectly affecting you know their perception how they're perceived you know right oh quick Question from Joe Bates. Hey, if you guys are reading this, if there are any uh, there, uh, Kali AKI in New Jersey, no, I think the closest one, Joe, there is something going on in Maryland. Matter of fact, I think this weekend, if I'm not mistaken, Alex is going to do something in Maryland on Saturday. I think after Mar the next closest from Maryland, New York. Uh, Raul Marquez is in New York cool. City. Um, that would probably be would be the closest to you as far as New Jersey, but New Jersey, not that I'm aware of. No. Cool. Oh, I don't know who this guy is, but you're doing that seminar with Slavin and Marco on the two on one. You can shout that out if you if you. Oh would. yeah 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 yeah. That's Glenn. Yeah. Like, are you all about that? <laughs> <laughs> all about that. <laughs> I'm I'm assuming that's what that is, right? Unless yeah, you yeah, have yeah. some that's, inside so joke. Marco and Slavin, they. they uh, they call their their organization boss. Yeah, yeah. Are boss. you all about that boss, Glenn? Glenn, and that's a funny guy. <laughs> What's it stand for, dude? You, you... Oh my gosh. Uh, I have. I'm gonna make it up. I'm gonna make it up. It stands for Baltic Assault Stab System. There you go. System. No, but so yeah, we, check so that we, out. We, That's... we can assume system is definitely the last word. Okay, so we just got to figure out what's the first three. <laughs> it seems interesting. 
and though and those guys are you know we yeah. we we've had our disagreements in the past but you know they love the filipino martial arts and yeah. they can really delineate art from practicality so yeah we'll, they we'll I check mean, those guys out that's what i'm doing with them because even though we do <clears> things <throat> slightly different for our two and one but basically though we're pretty much in the same lane as sure. far as yeah what works and what's just out there and yeah basically just you know fairyland <laughs> you know? yeah yeah two on one that's what it's all about i'm a firm yeah. believer yeah and you know like even you and i and and burton it's like well mm -hmm. inside two on one outside two on one i know and matter of fact, i'm going to be talking stuff. to him tomorrow because i'm hoping he's going to be ready to go yeah. with that because he's been supposedly he's been fit the meds have been making him feel better so cool. don't so i i have not forgotten i definitely still want to do that with with us three for sure Right on. Okay, Dean, uh, I think this is going to be my, unless we get on a tangent, my last question, right? So somebody who doesn't have any Kalis Illustrissimo experience and they've got a buttload of me and all the time in the world and they go to you, Dean Franco and they say, I want the world tour. I want the, I want the complete Kalis Illustrissimo picture. What you're responsible for now, based on this question, is the sequence of which you direct them to an instructor. So would you be like, start with Mangromi and then go with Yuli and then go with Brandon? So take a second um, to think about it. Okay. No, no. Geograph. At first, I would find geographically where they live. You know what I mean? No, like, no. They're you... they're they're millionaires. So this is a, a cool uh, so, hypothetical. So not, so Money's not, not an issue. issue. Travel's not no, an issue. Yeah. COVID doesn't exist. And okay. this is the ideal, in your opinion, the okay. ideal KI circuit. So that by the end of that, they they really got a good understanding of of KI. Okay, yeah. Who would they start with? Who would go along the way? And and who would they end with? Okay, so who would they start with? Wow, that is a phen phenomenal question. I would have them start with for the fundamentals of the strikes and all that. Kiro or Ricketts sanction fundamentals. I said, look, so, so either, either Brandon or Arnold. Correct. For the, okay. just for the, your freaking fundamental footwork, your fundamental strikes. Boom. Then I would direct them definitely to Ray Floro, Amon Romy on the Unipagata as long as well as David Gould on the Praxion and Unipagata. I would have them definitely visit Yuli to give to get that flavor, his flavor. And I'm trying to think. I think I covered everybody, as far as quote unquote the main folks mm -hmm. that are currently still alive. How about Bang Romi? No, no, Bang Romi included. I, I I put him there with Ray. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I know words like. You know, like I'm looking at first, second generation people. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, sure. yeah. Could they go out and see Burden? Sure. Could they go out and go see Sean Zerger? Sure. Oh, Tommy Die in Canada. They should definitely make a stop there. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So Tommy Die, uh, Brandon, Arnold, Ray Floro, Romeo, Yuli. Man, those six. Man, if you got with those. Damn. Six, Okay, like and then that. send them to the boudoir to test out what you've learned. Yeah, so then when they're done, then they have to take a flight to Toronto, and then boom, we'll get you guys. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like an amazing, ama and wouldn't it be great if these guys can be in one place and just get along and have all the KI people just experience the beauty, the elegance, the sophistication, the brutality of Khaleesi Lestrissimo? Man. Well, we, well, one of the things I'm going to try to do is we already kind of talked about it with Dax is that where I'm going to, I mean, it's, it's in its infancy right now, but one of the things where I'm going to consider or not, I shouldn't say consider, I'm going to try to get going and get the wheels going <clears throat> is kind of a North American KI thing. So what that would be basically would be getting Sean, Dax, you know, your Canada guys, and then uh, somebody, Vico, Brandon, if Brandon was visiting, 
And who am my uh, boss day? He's in Atlanta. Obviously, he'd be more than welcome. So basically, your KI instructors within North America collectively get them in a kind of a neutral, as far as geographically speaking, city. Wouldn't that be neat? Like, that would be like amazing, North America, man. You know? So yeah, if anyone try, can make it happen, right? Dean, it's you, bro. I'm going to try. Make it happen. All you do is try, right? And I you know. see there. Here, here's the thing, though. You, I, I got a question for you here. So when you look at KI, what attracts mm -hmm. you? Techniques? Do you look at it from a tactics or technique point of view? Well, look, my KI foundation, really, well, I, there's Archie Luz here in Toronto who showed me some preliminary concepts. Mm -hmm. And uh, through no fault his own, of his own, I didn't get it just by virtue of where I was in FMA. Right. I'm like, oh, this seems complicated. But looking back now, he's a he's a Tony Diego guy. He's oh, a no, boxer. Archie, oh, he's yeah, a Golden yeah, Glove guy. guy. So oh, yeah. amazing. Archie Luz, if you're in the Toronto area, go seek him out. But my actual foundation in Khaleesi Lestrissimo was in a wooded area <laughs> with Fabrizio. And in Sean van, Zerger down by the river. With <laughs> <laughs> I swear there was something very timeless about that. Yeah, but you we know were, what? Though? You were that was three or four years ago. Yeah, that's not you, that would like one time I saw. I watched that video a few times, and yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and I tell you why, because I've seen such. I mean, that you're not the same person then, not even remotely close, and you wouldn't have gotten hit by that so. one shot. And then the one shot I'm referencing is where. You actually crossed his midline, and he yeah. just did a box on it. And I'm thinking, like, there's no way Paula would do that now. There's no way. <laughs> you know what I mean, no. Yeah. Also, that video, you have to understand. Um, I was feeding, but you know what I love about how Fabru T's K. By the way, he broke two of my bones with a steel machete in that lesson. And through no fault of his own, it, it it was based on the inadequate equipment that I had, and it was a one in a million shot. It went between, cracked oh, my between. knuckle, okay, okay, cracked my elbow, X-rays, fractured. But what I loved about Fabrizio, and this is how I I get to meet masters from all over the world, right? It's mm -hmm. based on this Socratic engine where I ask questions, and then they just keep going and going and going. Mm -hmm. A lot of my questions from Fabrizio, he answered with, I'm going to try to do an impression of Fabrizio. Don't ask me with words, Paolo. Don't ask me with words. Ask me with the actions. And so a lot of those things would be like, okay, instead of me trying to articulate what you would do with this, I would just feed him that. So I wasn't, mm. I wasn't sparring with him. No, I got you. Right? But also at the same time, like you said, I'm not the same, you know, fighter. I'm not the same Filipino martial artist never three years than today. I am today. Never happened right? today. <laughs> but that was my foundation, man. And I'm yeah. so grateful that I got Fabrizio and Sean Zerger yeah. to lay down this foundation through the way that we did it. And based on that, I traveled and I brought it to the Philippines and I fought with KI. Mm. I brought it. That's yeah. Awesome. I, that's and awesome. It's inc it's incredible. Where's he what live I, now? Probably too. He lives in Montreal right now. He's in he's in, in the Montreal. Montreal. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. And so you know, again, this is just based on who I am, right? And going back to this car analogy that we seem to keep going back to the back seat. <laughs> the back seat. Well, the chassis of my Filipino martial arts is Pikiti Tertia. Yeah. You know, and. Because I'm so not concerned with learning the totality of Bikini Tertia, which is so vast, so many subsystems, so many weapons, so many weapon combinations. Mm. I don't bother to learn A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? I, I see it principally, and that's that's the chassis that I layer concepts that I pick up from Kalis Illustrismo on top of. Yeah. Right? And so my Lutang may come as I'm charging forward, cutting 45 degrees, and then I see an opportunity for a lutang, I wouldn't have gotten there unless my Pikiti Tusha footwork got me in range. 
Gotcha. No, I understand. Yeah. No, right. right. No. And my fighting style is very much like Tinkerbell. I'm like, I really love putting myself in danger and I get hit a lot because of it. Yeah. Right. I think you're, you're learning through the, I, I don't know. I think what you're doing is great. You're learning through failures, man. You're not gonna learn anything through success. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And so by putting KI on this Pikiti Tertia chassis, I, I, you know, it can be characterized as inefficient because I'm moving around a lot. Like I'm charging, I'm cutting. I'm pu- but then there are moments in my fight where I'm just like, I'm just going to be stoic. You're going to slow everything down and take full lens in and Boom. all that. Right. And, that, and I'm just like yeah. this turret and I'm in KI yeah. mode. Yeah. But for most of what they've seen is me doing Pikiti Tertia. Yeah. When I flip the switch and I do KI, they're like, oh. And so they attack, and I'm doing my my um, my retaradas and my lutangs, yeah. and I look cool doing it b- because it's something completely different from the style looks that are presented them at the first half. Right. And then I go into well into walk, and I think it's just beautiful in that way. I mean, no disrespect to it. I'm sure no, all of these systems are complete, yeah. but I, I yeah. like. I like to layer it and I think it's it's really by the way, man. What what's that the Lutang with that with that strike? Baksak. Bak, Baksak. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. My goodness. So, so Ricketts. Okay. That's so such a critical right. tool for me. I mean, like very pronounced here. Yuri yeah. has an arco to his. Yuli, you know, here and then cuts around, but yeah, yeah. So when you do that, Dean, what's that? Because uh, how I like to do it is I bait with my lead leg, so I almost get into a boxing stance where it's very wide. Guess who does that? Well, I don't know. Brandon, he does that. It's oh so God. good, man. It's so inviting that up. lead leg. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. it to your opponent, it seems like you have all of your weight on that yeah. lead leg. Yeah, yeah. But because of your your weight shift, they think that they're gonna catch that leg, but it's oh, yeah. lighter yeah. than they they think. Yeah, and Brandon makes it, yeah. But Brandon does the same in Ganyo with his leg, but pushes it out there. They yeah, they got it, and then he does a quick like hip shuffle back and yeah. Damn, I got to fight. That question Damn. is, yeah. The reason why I asked you that question is because of the videos I've seen of you, I you are embracing, in my opinion, in my mm. humble opinion, you are embracing KI tactics. I oh, see yeah. you let it just try to miss you and get behind at Boudoir. I see you playing with the cloak and all that, the proximity. So, if, in my opinion, I think you are embracing. And all that, and I think that's I think that's fantastic. And where I'm going with this is the argument that you need 20 years, okay, 20 years for refining your techniques, your strikes. Absolutely, you don't need 20 years to get the tactics and how to implement them in a fight. No, and the thing is, like, we have so much opportunity, and 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 people are coming together that maybe it took 20 years back then because the opportunities to spar and test were were less than they are today but But you can you can put ki in a hypodermic needle and just stick it right into the vein man and it'll (laughs) pulse through your body i Um, love kelly's illustry so much i just got ki'd i know (laughs) hey is there like is there a um a a generic ki logo because i got this uh well i kind of hit it but there's that that? bikini tertia so uh, I, I hit it. So it's like the sun with well, the ka the symbol and the three arrows. But Not I would like I'm to wrap K. Matter of fact, the reason why I put Ilshisamo's picture in the in the flyer to me because I didn't want anybody. I didn't want to pick somebody's, you know, logo and everybody else is like, well, oh, see, see, he favors those guys. He picked their logo. So I, I wanted just something new to it. But to answer your question, I don't think there's a generic. Not that I'm, you know, if I'm, if folks, if I'm wrong, if there is one, somebody please, you know, definitely tell yeah. Paul. But to my awareness, I don't think there's anything generic, as far as I know. Anyhow. 
I might just tattoo KI and my own interpretation because that's how I yeah. view Khaleesi Lestrissimo anyway through my own lens. Yeah, but um, not that I'm aware of, but there could be. I just, not that I can think of at the moment far as what would be kind of your generic KI, yeah. Um, uh, for the people who are watching this and by old man still can. So this uh, KI video that um, I documented with uh, Fabrizio, and when Sean was his training partner, if you guys contact uh, Fabrizio, um, he'll get it to you. And it's it's at, it it is the, my foundation in in KI, yeah. and really what what you know Fabrizio and and Sean as well to this day. Sean is so active and he's so explorative and he's a risk taker when it comes to his expression of KI. Yeah. Meanwhile, he honors. You know his agreement with Mung Romi to just right. keep Ki the way it's you know we're, we're yeah. preservation. No, I know, and I, I got that feel from him when I was interviewing him. That, Absolutely yeah. beautiful. I love yeah. that relationship, but at the same time, <clears throat> Sean is a dog brother, and he, and these things will come out when you fight him. Yeah. So it's that's funny. Which is, that's that's awesome. I mean, that's that's what it's. Yeah, no, no. I, it was enjoyable interviewing him and, and and all of them. I mean, you know, they all, I tell you, every single person I had on interview, interviews all had something to offer. They really did. Um, you know, they, they all had their piece. They, it was all something new and informative and enlightening. So I have to, you know, a big thanks to all those that part participated. You know, Mark Wiley, Brandon, Yuli, um, Ray Galan. Third one was Arnold, surprise visit from Brandon, Vico, Duran, um, Ray. Then the, and, this, and then the fourth was, yes, uh, Ray and Dax. And then the fifth, Sean Zerger and sixth one. But they all, I tell you, they all, all had something to offer and contribute to the theme series. And I'm just thankful. And those who are watching this, I highly recommend if you get the chance to watch all five of them, you're going to get something different because I, I particularly tailor my questions for each theme so episode based on who was there. So obviously when I had the pillars on, the remaining two kind of geared towards pillar stuff and early times with the Shisamo. You know, when I had, uh, for instance, when I had Kiro and then Brandon showed up and all that, well, then I kind of went into compare and contrast between Carol and Ricketts Sanction. But I highly, if you can, watch all five you're gonna i mean you're gonna just see and hear some really interesting <clears throat> content on ki man so i urge you you need like an editing assistant dean because honestly i can't watch a two hour three hour i know interview. i know you, you know I what know. i mean like so and yeah, like no, these I gems I, I, I can't either I, you know the people yeah. who do that i like i give so much credit to the people that want because i'm thinking like like i see yeah. the the views and i'm like wow i i really give these people credit because there's no way I could go on YouTube and watch a two-hour thing. <laughs> I can't do it. Live is different. I'll, I'll 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 watch it live. Maybe I'll watch two hours live, but I can't watch. Yeah, two but hours recorded. yeah, I think live because of the dynamic and you're seeing yeah. the comments. You're kind of engaged, but 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 yeah. like much to your point, I couldn't go on there and just go uh, right. Um, yeah, like okay, I'm gonna sit down now and watch this. Two no. So all you guys watching live right now, this is friggin' special. And if you're not watching this live, meh, I wouldn't watch it either. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but by the way, leave a comment. I'm gonna pop it up on screen. Let me know what you guys is there, think. Um, Paolo, is there wait? Can when you download, can you send me? Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you. Oh, it's yeah, not too yeah, much yeah. trouble? Okay, okay. No, not at all. Not at all. Guys, by the way, leave a comment. I'm going to pop it up here. Let me know what you think of Dean Branco. Let me know what you think yeah. of FMA. And I think it's just an amazing thing. And I, I honestly believe, Dean, the value of what you're doing is not going to be really fully appreciated until way down the line when we're all gone. Some and people then, say that, and I'm like, I'm like, what are you yeah, talking man. about? I'm just talking to people. And there's like, no, you don't no. understand. You're making this library that's going to be appreciated years on the road. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, man. So much has been lost in, in mm -hmm. FMA's near history because it lacked this outlet. We live in very mm -hmm. special times. Unfortunately, that means you get to hear from, you know, a-holes like me now and then. But at the no, same time, but at the same time, you get something like FMA discussion that documents 
these masters in their own words, right? Yeah. So, by the way, can I make an offer to you? Sure. If you'd like, because maybe, you know, Philip, some Filipinos, they have this insecurity about speaking English. Meanwhile, they know it really, really well, okay. right? So if you ever have a need for somebody who can speak in Tagalog with them and also interpret at the same time, I can be that yeah. guy. Really? Okay. Yeah, for sure. I can speak Tagalog fluently. Wow. Well, can you – how about you and Master Henry coming on? Yeah, that's possible. I think he likes me. He gave me a no, big No, I'm sure he does. That's why – that would be uh, that would be wonderful. If you don't mind, I would love to get you two on. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. And the, and, oh and Mung Henry is somebody that – Again, if you love KI or, or FMA in general, this guy, this man is a true living legend. Do you talk to him frequently? Or? No, no, I actually don't. I, I don't. I don't talk to him um, a lot. I see his videos. I comment on it. Sometimes he gives me the thumbs up, but uh, you know, well, we, you we don't. don't, we don't have I, mean, that I would greatly appreciate it. I would definitely get you both on. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Right on. Hey, Elric made a comment. Um, What's that? Uh, he talks about this Socratic method right, where the the learning is based on the the questions from the students. And he says that Socratic learner directed questioning is how most learn directly from Tatang. It is only yeah. now that folks need to first go through a curated curriculum. So how I learned from Fabrizio is how they learn from Yeah, Tatang. I'm sure right, there was no and that was intentional on Fabrizio's part, you know, which and that does I don't mean that in a bad way at all, that he had you like feed him and to better describe, yeah. you know, what he wanted to emulate or show to you. And and I agree with Elric saying, um, based on that, and which is why I think Yuli has so much to offer in this area because Yuli really went to detail when I meet with him one on one, how he goes, like, well, you have to understand I was back here and I would see from a yeah. different angle, things he was doing. It's so fascinating to listen to Mon Yuli just go on in that, but much to well, his point, you know. I was about to ask you a follow-up question in, in in that, you know, some people are very articulate and, and they can they can speak really well on KI, mm -hmm. but who do you think we think we can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, who do you think would be one of the best instructors to learn KI from that is based on the students' needs and questions and 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 curiosities you know like what if i did this to you uh, how, how would you deal with somebody cutting 45 degree and doing a panastas from piquiti tertia like who would be the best instructor in ki to handle that kind of energy i think dave i mean the first thing that comes to my mind and i know he's not looked at through the lens of ki david gould yeah uh, yeah i mean just from my experience someone that can show you why you would do this why you would do that why you would reposition there based on that why you would do both mm -hmm. Versus Australia or Vertical, mm -hmm. he's just somebody that's and I there and trust me, there's more out there. He's just the one that first came to my mind. Got it, um, got it. You know, but uh, I'm sure Vico, he's another one. I mean, Brandon too. You know, I mean, Brandon yeah, too. yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd be Sean and Sean and Fabrizio for me. Yeah, yeah, because that's who you were right. Who you were yeah. right exposed to would you yeah. right so i'm so biased man i'm so biased i mean really. yeah but you know what though we have to be honest and this is what i mean yeah. like we are we all have our biases now okay as much as i so and this is where i'm gonna be honest to the community as much as i gave every sanction or offered the opportunity for every instructor sanction organization to be heard it's very clear i have my biases I mean, but that For doesn't sure. mean if somebody came to me, my my answer to them would be, you should go see as many KI instructors as humanly possible if you want to really, really get the essence of all their translations or their nuances or everything they got maybe from first, second generation, of thing, but see as many as you can to get yeah. the best understanding for you. You know? Fantastic. Dean, we're approaching the second hour of this interview. Let's cut it off here. Yeah. Um, and I really thoughts. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for, again, for doing this. I really appreciate it. Of course, yeah. man. Of yeah. course. Man, this FMA thing, right? Yeah, I know. Toxic, huh? <laughs> hey, <laughs> we could have worse vices, right? We yeah. could. Yeah. We could. 
So final thoughts. Final so my thoughts. My final thoughts dude. would be in regards to the theme of episodes is if you are interested in pursuing KI, I again, you know, check. I mean, whether your um, your concerns are geographic, if money's not an issue and all that, I would definitely try to see as many as you can. I'm more than willing to help in any way. If you want to message me, I get a few messages every month who I should go train with and all that. So I'm used to these messages and I'll give you an accurate, honest, descriptive account based on your needs, based on your background, based on what you're looking for, your personality type, an honest answer who I would recommend for you to go train with. But ultimately, I'm going to still tell you, you should make it full circuit as much as only possible and get exposure from everybody. It's only going to better yourself. How's that for final thought? <laughs> I love that, Dean. I love that, you know, um, and that makes a whole lot of sense, right? Um, I characterize Bikini Tertia in the same way that I, I seem to see KI in that Kalis Illustrissimo is a puzzle and that all of these pieces, right? Maybe they're fragmented. Maybe some puzzle pieces are connected to others and maybe mm -hmm. there are gaps. But for the practitioner, for you to get the full picture, you really need to touch these puzzle pieces, yeah. put them together. Uh, don't you want to be the best version of yourself? Why wouldn't you go do that? If you absolutely, if, you, if somebody gave me a plane ticket to freaking uh philippines or you better believe i can go seek out monroe you better believe i can go seek out yuli somebody gave me a ticket to australia you better be seek i go seek out right floor and all that why i want to be the best version of me i want to give the best to my students you know right so. and dean do you do you teach ki now yes i just started you know brandon said look i want you to go start doing it i want you to propagate our system but better yet i want you to get a better understanding because through the teaching lens and all that so um yeah so i i have and i'm glad and i gotta be honest i had a little self-doubt in the beginning doing it because i consider myself on our seniors and all that but finally i just said you're not a newbie in the community put your Buckle up your pants and embrace this role. But I'm gonna be honest, I I I, I kind of question myself, and I don't think I should have, that's but good. I did. No, that's good. That's good. I think too many people jump uh, prematurely into instructor roles, and I I always think it's good to have a little bit of insecurity, as long yeah. as these insecurities drive you to action to to get yeah. better. I think that's that's incredibly. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I think that's appropriate. I think that's how everybody should yeah, be. No instructor I mean, should be so confident that they don't question their methodologies. Right. And, um, right? and then I obviously I've gotten more comfortable in the role, more, my confidence has gone up. My understanding is going up because I'm now relaying the information. I'm seeing it through a different lens now. So it actually it's been a yeah. very helpful experience for me to do it, you know? Did you did you come up with any uh, original drills for KI? Not as of yet. See, I, okay. you know what I'm hoping. Like when it comes empty hand against knife, like okay, I got here. Okay, well, pop the elbow off and move yourself on the wall. What do we got to grab here? Swim in the like I could come up on a dime, empty hand yeah. knife when it comes. But I'm not there yet with KI. Huh? You know, I well, think we need to get there. Don't get me wrong. You know, I would love to get there, but yeah. um, come up I'm with sure some games, man. Come up with yeah, some games. I'm, I'm sure it will. It will. Luton games, man. I think Luton oh, yeah. Retorada with a Baksak is, yeah. I mean, flagship for me, in my opinion, mm -hmm. KI. And if you can come up with a game or a drill that will really hone that. Yeah, crowd, right. Um, yeah, no, right. Different. I just, I just got to get out of that mindset and just and take the mindset which i put so deeply in one area and now expound expand on it hey look if you could do it over there it's fair to say you could do it over here so i think it's more of a mental thing with me honestly work it out i think i think you need more ki students so that you can continue to craft so guys go contact dean franco if you want um if you want to be directed to the calice illustrissimo system based on your personality your character your mm. journey your experience level contact dean franco he's gonna he's gonna put you in the right path and yes. uh, he just you just have so much love 
for KI, and I think that is admirable. I think it's evident, right? Um, so thank you, Dean. Thank you for uh, my God for thank being you. you. It's been wonderful, and I'm so man. I was like, man, I'm going on. So was it dumpster fire or is it FMA source? <laughs> I gotta change the name. So FMA source is the channel. The podcast I called it the FMA dumpster fire podcast, and that was a joke. Okay. That I was like, you know, like the boudoir was a joke. Right, right. right. Now we're going to call it was, a fighting group now. called a boudoir. Well, I, I just want to say it's been an honor to be on FMA Source podcast, FMA Dumpster Fire. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, Dean, you stay well. Keep doing what you're doing. We love All you right. for it. And, yeah, um, don't be a stranger because two on one with Burton. <laughs> Let's go. All right, Dean. I'll see you later, brother. Thank you so much. All right, guys. All right, everybody. Woo! That was a good one. That was two hours. Um, uh, if you guys watch this live, what a treat. I think that was really cool. Thank you very much for, I mean, spending your time watching this. Um, so if you enjoyed it, a few requests. If you aren't already subscribed to FMA Source on YouTube, takes two seconds, homie. Like, go on YouTube, type in FMA Source, hit subscribe. Next favor. Please do the same for FMA discussion. I can't stress enough how important the work of Dean Franco and his admins are. It is a thankless job, you guys. Like, there is no money in this. There is no glory in this. He does it for the love of the Filipino martial arts. Um, so just go head, head on over. Again, it seems like a little thing to just go hit that subscribe button, but it is the ultimate currency in social media land to have a subscriber to your youtube channel so i appreciate it very much if you guys can just take the time fma source fma discussion that would be really cool um really appreciate it. thank you to everybody who commented um dean is super duper approachable he makes time so go contact him if there are if there's anything that we missed from this conversation, and there's probably a lot, and there are probably people out there who are thinking, oh, you didn't mention this person or that person. This is not the end. Man, I'm a Pikiti guy. I'm a Pikiti guy, but I'm not I'm not that Pikiti. I'm not that kind of Pikiti. But I love KI. I love it. And, you know, both of these arts are going to live for a really, really, really long time. And together as a community, if we can make steps towards some kind of unity, if not unity, civility for the sake of this art that we love, man, we are living in an extraordinary time, you guys, right? We lost so much in the near history of the Filipino martial arts. We have an opportunity to build monuments today. So even if you're out there and you're thinking, I don't want to go on a podcast. And that's not my style. Listen, it's going to amount to something. And maybe the value of that thing, you may never, ever get to see. But I guarantee you, there's somebody watching this. There's somebody watching that and that video. There's somebody who watched your TikTok video. There's somebody who watched your Instagram post. And you will never get to see that person. You will never get to know their name. But you made a huge difference in their life. So please continue sharing your expression of the Filipino martial arts. Be forward and transparent when you've made mistakes. Like, damn it, I've made so many mistakes in FMA. It's ridiculous. But I'm still on a journey. You guys are all still in a journey. Just be fearless with sharing this just amazing, amazing gift. This is a gift from the Philippines to the world, right? The headquarters of FMA will always be in the Philippines. That's never, ever going to change. No matter how big it gets in France and Germany and Canada and the United States and Brazil, whatever, FMA is Philippines. So if you get the opportunity, go back to the motherland, right? Go see some masters in the Philippines. There are a lot of them and they're waiting for you. You know, Philippines sometimes gets a bad rap, but it's like, it's safe, man. And the food is incredible. The people are amazing. 
The vibe of the Philippines is just something to be experienced. It's a great vacation destination. And if you can pair your vacation with your martial arts training, win, win, win. All right. So keep training. Look at this stuff. Thank you guys very much. Hey, Brandon was watching. Shout out to you, brother. That's it. That's all I got. Thank you for watching FMA Source. A uh, big, big shout out to F Discussion and a huge thanks to Dean Franco. And thank you, people. Thank you for studying the Filipino martial arts. And just remember, as much as we love this thing, there's a there's a there's a way to there's a way to express our love for it that is going to be beneficial to the systems that we love. And with that. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time. My name is Paula Rubio, aka GN. Peace now for the dopest outro in all of FMA podcast land. Good night. Get the fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. You're finished. Get up, 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 We need to launch a full federal investigation into why and how this happened. Who allowed this?